then your picture is there and people can oh. kind of get an idea that you're, you know, who it is that's talking. I would have put on different clothes. <laughs> oh, you look great. That's lovely. The bat no batteries didn't run out, though, like my camera batteries. So okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, that's not the same right. thing. Yeah, right. right. Um, so so I'll, we'll begin with the interview first, um, and then we can take pictures later. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. that's all that's fine, but I, I want to voice something to the viewers, too. To what? Um, she wants the interviewer's voice, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go. You can go. You can do this. Because oh, were you supposed to do this? I thought you were doing Steve. And I thought I was doing Well, this. you two were initially were going to the interview. Actually, um... Don't me over there. She is from, and he's Dan. Dan? Yeah. And Miyuko. Fran? Shout out to you. Fran? Fran. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And we are just, um, are going, uh, we just have to, like, explain why we are interviewing you okay because like we are supposed to like use your voice and like images to put it on the kind of show documentary at the end of this project okay and we just have to have a consent from you sure so yeah yeah so I, do i need to sign anything yes okay. um you can actually keep them but initially this states like you are not being paid for that <laughs> <laughs> and we're yeah it's gonna be open to public and I think it's okay now okay uh, this is the 18th 18th There you are. Thank you. And I need the signature. So this states, uh, this states you're. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Um, um, there's no benefits. This states initially. And this is like we are going to use your like voice and images. And so. So where do I sign? Um, I, yeah, I had to print your name here. Oh, God. Don't you want to put that on something softer? Is it well? This is the important one. Okay. Just here. Me and the viewers. That's just the data <coughs> here. You said the 18th or the 13th? 18th. 18th. Oh, maybe we should go on something. And this is the signature over here. Yeah. Makes sense. You want my street address? Yes. Not St. Mark's. So this is our project okay. uh, director. You can contact him if you have any concerns. Okay. Okay. And you're all set. <coughs> uh, so we are interviewing Susan Willett. And how long have you been involved in the activities here? The art gallery yeah. specifically. Yeah. This will be the fifth year. Fifth year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse lived? me, I have a little allergy going here. Um, you've lived close by the church 20 years ago? Yes, uh, I did. I lived over on Summit Avenue. Uh -huh. And um, as I told you before, the Downer Avenue area was just, it was just hopping. <laughs> it was so exciting. There was so much going on. And... Um, there's one thing missing from this um, beautiful rendering of Downer, um, and that's the block on the west side, the block to the south on the west side, and it was... Does she have the map of that? I'm not really familiar with that. 
Do you see that? Sorry, it's just from Google Maps. So oh, okay, okay, okay. And you feel free to like write something down because. Oh, there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you want me to just write those down and then give them to you later, rather than oh, during yeah, the interview? Just, um, um, Why don't you just continue with yeah. Me? Okay. And just point well, out I'm going here. down. Okay, it's um, as you cross Downer Avenue, as you cross Bellevue, mm -hmm. going south mm -hmm. on Downer, mm -hmm. um, on the west side there was. Um, I cannot remember. I think it was like a, like just a sandwich shop that then turned into um, a. Uh, it was called Licks Ice Cream. Mm -hmm. And oh. next to that was a dry cleaners. Then there was the Downer Theater. Yeah, some, somewhere right here. Yeah. And yeah, somewhere. yeah the yeah. Downer Theater. And then um, Ma Jolie Woman Marjorie. Shop. And I'm trying to think. Um, the Pallet Shop, which is no longer in existence, which was an art supply shop and Webster's Bookstore and Brewster's Cafe. And they were all, oh, and also the Chancery, before the Chancery, there used to be this very trendy bar called Judges. It was the place to go for younger people um, on a weekend night. And then they, they moved, I believe they moved to North Avenue someplace, um, and then the Chancery came in there. But every single area was filled. I mean, there was nothing empty at all. And there was so much there. You had cafes, you had the bookstore, you had the art supply store, you had women's clothing, you had dry cleaners, you had a theater, you had the coffee trader, which was the place to go to meet and greet people, um, pharmacy, um, Syndex. And if you didn't want to shop Syndex, you had Sentry. And then on the and on the east side of that block that I'm talking about, which is south, again, there was nothing. Just people's backyards and, and nothing, nothing was developed at all. But it was such an exciting time. It was just, um, it was filled with people all the time. And um, it was just neat. And, you know, really close to the lake, several blocks from the lake, so. So was it uh, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. What was it about Trader Joe that uh, Dr. coffee Joe, coffee trader? trader. <laughs> it was just it was um, he left the things in the ceiling, the uh, pipes and things like that. The walls were brick. Um, he had murals painted on the walls. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it was just a, it was big, and it just had this ambience that people were just, it was the place to go. And you could sit and drink coffee and visit or read or write or before the computer age <laughs> 20 years ago, um, you could stay there for hours. And it was, I don't know how to explain the, 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 they had good, Good food and not so good food, but it was really the place to go and meet people and visit. And um, it was, I would say, the coffee trader was probably the, the, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry because this is being recorded. But I can't no, think okay. of it. But it was, it was the, the. Um, Help me with this. Some place that 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 stabilizes the neighborhood. Anchor. Anchor. Or yes, anchor. it was the anchor place for that for Downer. I think mm -hmm. I really do. Meet me at the coffee trader. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that was. <laughs> people would come from all over. People would come from the way west side mm -hmm. to meet someone at the coffee trader. Yeah, it was there for a long time. I used to go there before I went to work and have coffee, and I met so many interesting people. And it was kind of like, you know, the same people would come for coffee before they would go to work. Mm -hmm. But then on the weekends, it was just 
mobbed with people. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a little different now, <laughs> but it was very exciting then. Um, what, what do you think the most uh, different thing from the past in Down Avenue? What is the most distinctive like, difference? The past Down Avenue and the present Down Avenue. Is that coffee, coffee trader or like? I'm not really clear. No, no, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Um, I think the coffee trader played a very major part in bringing people to the area. Um, the two women's clothing stores, the, they were called, J, one was called JL Justice and the other one was Ma Jolie, and they carried just very different women's clothes. And um, it was before the kind of trendy clothes became popular, and they were in the forefront of that. Um, of course, the theater was always a draw because they had Kepsel's popcorn, and you couldn't get Kepsel's popcorn any other place, and it was the best popcorn in the world. And Kepsel's also had on this, I'm trying to find. the wagon? Yeah, the yeah. wagon. Well, Kepsel's was in the Downer Theater. That was the only popcorn they had. But then they had the wagon across the, the, the street. Yeah, I forgot about the little wagon. So you could get Kepsel's popcorn there. It's the best popcorn. Um, oh, was this so good? It was so tender. And it wasn't real, real buttery. I mean, you could have butter on it, but it was very tender and not a whole lot of kernels. And it was local. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, Do they still have it? They, what they have is microwave, yes. You can get that at Sendix on Oakland. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I just had some the other night. <laughs> and it's just as good. Um, I guess when I, when I lived here, mostly it was the coffee trader was a draw. Brewster's Cafe was a charming little cafe. Um, it was just tiny, but they had really good food. They had good, healthy food. And then the bookstore was right next door. And then I'm an artist, so the palette shop was right there for art supplies. So it met all of my needs. <laughs> Why did you move away? I bought a house. I was renting a third floor ballroom apartment over on Summit, and I bought a house. And where so is it? It's over in River West. Oh, another nice artist area. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, the I'm, I'm like having so many questions in my mind. About the gallery or about Downer? Um, about Downer and gallery. Okay. Um, I like to talk about the gallery oh, because yeah. it's just it, that the, the corridor where the ga the original gallery was endowed by uh, the family of Marion McCarthy, who was uh, a parishioner here, and they endowed that corridor to be an art gallery and put in track lighting and put in the molding at the top so that we could hang the paintings from chains, which back then was um, the thing to do and it is a nightmare right now <laughs> to hang paintings on these chains. But um, n nothing really came of, of the gallery. Nobody really took responsibility for it ever once in a while. Um, our priest before April uh, would ask people if they could hang some of their paintings and he asked me and that's how I kind of got a feel for the gallery and um, I thought this is you know this is a waste of space and they endowed this to be a gallery so let's do something with it so I went to the Unitarian Church up on Astor because I knew they had an art gallery there and I talked to the woman who's in charge of it, and she gave me some pointers, and she gave me some names of artists, and um, I just, I don't know, I just 
I was in, in the vest, on the vestry at the time and presented it and they thought it would be great and you know it's a volunteer um, position so why not do it and um, I'm pretty active in the art community so I have a lot of um, resources a lot of contacts with other artists and so we have have an attorney I used one of our attorneys at St. Mark's to draw up a release because we don't have any insurance to protect the if anything happens to the art. And so each artist has to sign a release. Um, they pay $35 to use the gallery for two months. Each show is for two months. I'm sorry, my voice is just going out on you me. Some water? No, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, um, the, the church now takes 10% of all sales. We didn't used to do that. But the reason we do that is that I talk the vestry into, this is a wonderful wall in the guild hall because there's so, you know, you can, there's so much visibility there where the corridor is pretty contained. And so if you have large pieces, you can really get back and look at them. And so they agreed um, to paint and fix that as an additional wall to the gallery, and it has been a great success. And so now we have three large walls, and um, we have six shows a year. Each one is two months long. And um, St. Mark's provides quite a bit of support for the artist in terms of their reception. But the artist is also required to do some things like they they need to create their own invitation and send it out. And for their reception, we ask that they provide the food and drink. And, um, oh, let's see. Um, you know, that's pretty much it. I hang the show with the artist because I, I give them the freedom to put to hang their pieces the way they they want them shown, so I do most of the hanging, but they do most of the layout, and I make suggestions from time to time if you know if I think something would look a little better. Um, we've had artists contact me because St. Mark's has become known as a as a really nice place to hang your art. And um, not expensive. We don't, you know, 10% commission is nothing compared to galleries. And I think I tried to make it as easy and as friendly as possible to the artists. And it's absolutely wonderful for the church because it gives so much beauty and so much um, different styles of art. I try to vary it with photography, abstract, um, pastel, oil, watercolor, encaustic. Um, I try to have a, a real eclectic type of show. And it also brings people into the church. And, and without exception, people who have come to see the show want to see the rest of the church, want to see the sanctuary. and. Um, it, it, it just has brought people in, and some people have come to our services, and uh, so I feel really good about that, that it not only brings beauty to the church, but it brings people into the church. And with Steve, you're going to talk with Steve later, with the concerts that he has and the music that he is so um, passionate about, we're really a church that supports the arts, I think, and that's kind of unusual. Uh, how are the sales? Um, it depends. It depends on the price point. Um, if they're very expensive, they usually don't sell. If they're a reasonable price point, um, this show we sold one the very first day, the show that's up right now. Um, it varies, but in the art world right now, sales are hard to come by. 
I can say that from experience throughout <laughs> the art community. Um, that the people just aren't buying a whole lot of art right now. Does it tend to be um, church members that uh, that purchase, or not necessarily? No. Uh -uh. So that there's and a we do flow of people not related to the church into right, into especially the at the receptions, and then we have a sign that we put outside. Um, saying art gallery open and then it draws people from especially in the in good weather especially when people are sitting outside eating it at, at the Hollander and you know just taking their walks on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday and they come in yeah when did the art gallery uh, begin five, five years ago I think that would ago. that would be 2008 could you speak a little bit more to your art background? Um, <laughs> and what type of art do you do? Um, um, well, I work in oils and pastels. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm working with pastels. And I'm just kind of playing around a little bit. But I mostly do landscapes and still lifes. Mm -hmm. um, not entirely realistic but more realistic than abstract, okay. And not abstract, but um, let's just say more realistic, but a looser style, a more painterly style than a tighter style. Um, I'm co-chairman of the Wisconsin Visual Arts which is a Wisconsin, yeah. are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. Because we have a kind of, do you have a kind of little magazine? Like yes, w, right? yes, Wisconsin Visual Arts Magazine, yes. Um, I'm a member of the uh, Wisconsin Pastel Artists, and I was a co-op owner of a gallery in Mequon that moved down to the Third Ward, and I decided not to continue with that. It's a lot of time and work to be in a co-op gallery, but it's, it's also a lot of fun. Um, I know uh, a lot of artists in the area, in the western part, in Cedarburg area, and, uh, and, I've, and that's happened just because of being in shows and being in organizations, and um, and I'm really unhappy that my voice sounds like this. That's, that's okay. <laughs> He's listening to your voice, I see. Yeah. Does it sound yeah. very scratchy and horrible? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. Not at all. Not at all. all right. Um, one thing I would say about the art community in Milwaukee and the surrounding areas is the artists are very supportive of each other and they're very kind people and I've seen it happen here um, that people will be curious and ask and want information and without exception the artists are so willing to do that and I think that's wonderful because you don't find that always. And maybe that's part of our Midwest culture, I don't know. <laughs> but um, very supportive community. It's a very active community that people, I think, aren't aware of. Like you said, River West is, you know, has a lot of artists in that area. I live just uh, west of the river, right on the river. So I'm not within River West. I'm right kind of on the edge. And of course, Cedarburg is is um, filled with artists, and then the Lake Country out in Delafield and Waukesha. Waukesha has become a a big art community, and then we have the Third Ward, which you have to be aware of the art community down there. And Walker's Point now is starting to be very popular, and Bayview is starting to have good art community. 
So it's there, it's out there. <laughs> it's exciting because there's so much to do and so much to see. The artists that uh, tend to show here, um, they're mostly from Milwaukee or even closer by to this area or just random? Just random b because what I do, um, for instance, the Unitarian Church has a call for artists and they have a certain day and time when artists who are interested in showing there can bring their art in. Then they judge the art, they jury it to decide who's in and who's out. So they do that for the whole year, which is very nice. What I do, because I like to contact the artist personally, even if I don't know them, I like to make that personal contact. It's a lot more work, but it, to me, it's, it, it works well for me. It's more work for me, but it's that personal touch. And I think that's why I've been able to get to fill slots. I've already got, as of this morning, four artists for 2014 already. And um, so it's unrelated to location. Unrelated. It depends on the artist, what type of art they have, what type of art they work they work with, and and how I want to vary the different shows because mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to put two watercolors back to back you, unless they were real different. Unless one was like an abstract and one was landscape and still life. So. What kind of theme were you considering for, for this um, quote-unquote exhibition? This particular one? Yes, yes. The theme is light, right. and it's, it's actually one of the artists wrote up, I don't know if you had an opportunity to see uh -huh. how, what, light me, what light means uh -huh. in the artist's eye. Uh -huh. It's excellent. Uh -huh. It's really great. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And each artist uh, de determines their own theme. Um, St. Mark's provides quite a bit for the artist's reception. We have a big reception table. Um, we provide wine glasses if they choose to have wine. We, ha we make coffee. Um, we have all of the, the uh, flatware and dishes and cups. Um, I make a, a nice table. We take some flowers from the sanctuary <laughs> mm -hmm. and use those as a centerpiece. Um, Who cleans up? Oh, I do. <laughs> I have washed many a wine glass. <laughs> it's, it's a little uh, frantic on Sunday because a lot of what we do what we have encouraged, and I'm not going to do that going forward, but we've encouraged the receptions to be after the coffee hour. Um, and I don't know how that got started. Maybe it was selfishly because I was here <laughs> that I didn't want to have to come back. I really can't remember. But um, I do everything. I do the whole setup for the reception and um, then the cleanup afterwards. But it's worked pretty well because coffee hour is all cleaned up and then, and then I can, and I'm already here because I'm here for church and coffee hour. The other thing that we have is Steve, whom you will talk to later, who's our music director, and one of our parishioners who plays the bass. They will provide live music for the reception if it's on Sunday. Now I haven't, <laughs> I'm going to have a show of my work, because I haven't shown here for uh, quite a while, in um, November and December. But I'm going to have my reception on a Thursday evening. So I'm not sure that I'll have live music for that. <laughs> not sure they'll come all the way in for that. But that, that's another thing that makes it really kind of special, is to have really live music. It's a good yeah. collaboration. Yeah. The, the gallery, as I said before, is hung on brass chains with S-hooks, mm -hmm. and it's very elegant looking once the work is up, but it's very challenging to, to get things hung correctly, um, just because they're the old-fashioned chains that hang down. 
good part. So do you almost everything? You do every almost everything for the art gallery, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. So um, so what the f uh, right as for the food and. I encourage them to bring finger food mm -hmm. so that people, it's just much easier. Mm -hmm. So we don't, you know, and have forks, and yeah. Right. And uh, we have everything from elaborate, catered reception food mm -hmm. to just cookies and cheese and crackers. Mm -hmm. I let the artist decide what they want to do, you know, how much they want to do. I pretty much give them a lot of freedom in in their uh, reception and in in their show. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, do you pick the theme like such as light beforehand? They do. The artists, mm -hmm. okay. the artists, and this happens to be a group of five artists, and we all met and um, they decided on the theme and collectively. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So you yeah. selected the artists and notified each other. Right. Right. Well, usually it's just one artist, but every year we've had a we've had a group. And um, actually, it's easier with the group because the hanging goes a lot more quickly because I have some help <laughs> that way. <laughs> and there are more people that come when it's a group. Um, right. But then it's also a challenge to know how to hang. This particular, these particular artists wanted a sample of all their art in the, on this wall, in the big wall. And then they each wanted to have their art compartmentalized in the gallery so that they all had their art in one section, not spread out. Besides this one wall, where do you have options for, uh, for hanging in that large room over there? Just that one wall, the one and then the gallery wall. Okay. And we don't encourage any um, 3D sculptures or ceramics or anything like that, just because we have a lot of activity going on here at St. Mark's, and we have a lot of children on Sundays. <laughs> and we just really don't have a good space to put things like that, so it's all 2D art. It's all art that can be hung. Um, some artists have note cards and things like that that they, they bring for sale. I'm curious. Um, this, is, this would be departing a little bit from the art gallery. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, um, as someone, as an artist, as an individual who, um, who gives a lot of value to visuals. I'm curious to think, to ask you, what's, what are the first things that you um, visualize when you think of Downer? Um, if it's a store, um, if it's the city, <laughs> um, if it's people, or... Um, I think it's people. It's people. It's people, it, yes. Especially because I remember my memories of years ago, there was one man, charming old gentleman, and he was called the mayor of Downer Avenue. And it was just things like that. And we had some eccentric people that were perfectly nice, but just, you know, a little bit eccentric. And, mm -hmm. and there was just, um, so I, thin, I think I continue to focus on the people that I see shopping and walking on Downer. Um, you live on River West area. Is there an area there that is com that you go to and shop at and kind of mingle and watch people? Well, that would be Altera on Humboldt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. You that's that. That's probably that's probably the most popular meet and greet place. But there are some really small little restaurants in River West that are just charming and great food and just tucked away. Um, but I would say Altera would be the coffee trader of River West. Do you come to Downer? Do oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Any, 
I have a corner lot. I have a house on a corner lot, speaking of corner lots before. And um, I have a big garden, and I have not enough time to paint. So I'm, I don't hang out a lot. <laughs> I hang out in my studio a lot and my garden a lot. Um, and taking care of the house and the lawn. And, and I have a wonderful neighborhood. We're just kind of tucked away in River West. And it's, I don't know if this is of interest of you, but to you, but where I live, um, years ago, the, the, the uh, Beer families built, man built well, semi-mansions on the river. And they had, they brought over craftsmen from Germany and Hungary, I think, to do all the intricate work. And they liked the area so much that they built these charming little houses in this kind of four block area. And it's just kind of tucked away, east of Humboldt, west of the river, south of Kern Park, and um, north of Concordia. And there are just some really charming little houses there. And it's just a quiet little neighborhood. And um, So um, you've moved to the River West because the River West has a kind of like out and across community? No, I moved there because I was looking and looking for a house, and I found this house, and I okay. didn't think I wanted to live rest, west of the river at that time. This is 23 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I found this house that just, I could tell it was in horrible shape, but I could tell it was a beautiful house, and it just needed mm -hmm. to be cleaned up and, <laughs> and everything, and it's just... I love it. <laughs> where were, so, um, where were, like, where and else I did you, like... And I don't think at that time there was the art community in okay. River West. That has grown. It's going. That has grown. In fact, they have an art walk now in River West, and they didn't have anything like that. They had studios. The artists had studios in River West, but they, did, they weren't well-known at all. I don't mean the artists. I mean the community as being an art artist um, place. Yeah. So apparently you looked in this area but there wasn't something comparable that was as affordable? There wasn't anything that was unique that I could afford <laughs> and I didn't just want a Milwaukee bungalow. I, I wanted something, being an artist, I wanted something you know that spoke to me, that had something unique about it. And um, found it. <laughs> found it. Um, did you expect kind of an art community in the Riverwest, or did you do something to go up to the art community? In no, I have had nothing to do with the community in Riverwest um, except to support the artists there. Um, they have, over time, built it up within themselves mm -hmm. and um, yeah. in real, and now back to the art gallery <laughs> um, <laughs> I have like a series of questions for you um, I'm curious uh, how many hours you, you um, spend yeah, oh spend gosh about, about you know how much before. time I spend on the computer <laughs> with <laughs> emails um, an average hanging of these three walls will take about three to four hours. Okay. And I spend a great deal of time communicating with the artists right. Right. and making sure they're comfortable and that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, I have to confess it does take a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we usually hang the art on Saturday and then have the reception on Sunday. Reception is usually a couple hours long, and then I clean up afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a commitment, right. but it's something that's brought so much, I think, so much to St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. But of course, I would think that being an artist. So, so then I'm curious, and why, why um, 
what this experience, uh, so we talked about what this uh, gallery space, uh, what kind of value it adds to St. Mark's. So I'm mm -hmm. curious uh, why you're so committed, what, what it means to you. Oh, it's been wonderful working with all these different artists and um, getting to know them because you really do get to know them when, you <laughs> when you're here for several hours hanging art and talking and, and, and then just the social part of the, of the uh, reception and meeting their friends. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a delight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I've gotten to know by contacting artists that I, that I wouldn't have known I've got, that's how I've grown in my, um, my art experience mm -hmm. with other artists. So it's been a great benefit to me. What, what are your hopes for the, for for the, the gallery? Yeah. What, do you, what, would you, what would you like to see in the future? Uh, I don't know how it could change. Uh, the only thing I think that could change would be uh, perhaps a different time for the reception so that um, perhaps more people would be able to come. I know Sunday, Sunday early afternoon is not the best time, when you especially when packer season <laughs> is on. <laughs> so I chose, I'm choosing to have my reception on a Thursday night because um, I'm staying away from the weekend, and I think that might be, I, I, it's, it seems to me as if some galleries are leaning towards Thursday, like 5 to 7, 5 to 8, something like that, as opposed to um, Friday, because we have the gallery night four times, I think four times a year, and then the Marshall Building has their own um, their own Marshall Building night four times. So that's eight um, receptions in a year. Mm -hmm. Where is the Marshall Building? The Marshall Building is on the corner of Buffalo and Water. Oh. And it is absolutely fantastic. It's filled with artists and studios. And there are a few, there's, I think there's an attorney's office there and there are a few other businesses there. But it has become the art um, building and the, I don't know who owns it but I know the man who manages it is absolutely wonderful to work with and it's a beautiful old building and they've renovated it. That's just for the record that's the third ward. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So the only thing that I think might change back to your question in the gallery is um, um, when the reception is being held, and I'm very open to coming back at a different time. It doesn't have to be on a Sunday. Um, I don't think, when I first started, I did it every six weeks the first year. That was too much. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was, that's all I was doing. And so we changed it every two months. Uh, we might not have six a year. It just depends on, on, how, and there is Steve. <laughs> um, it just depends on the artist that we can get. Hi, Susan. Hello there. Hi. I, I'm, uh, I'm behind schedule. Cause no, because we, we're, we're pretty much, are we done? You have more Michelle? questions? You have a couple more couple questions? More, yeah. Yeah. Michelle was a little late, so we're running just a tad behind. Okay. Well, you I can sit in. Like in a minute or two. Oh, I can just sit in, right? Sure, you can sit in. <laughs> Make a nice segue then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm also curious. Um, uh, it seems like uh, with your connections to the art community that um, you are committed to this space. I'm sure um, artists outside of St. Mark's are becoming more and more familiar with this gallery space and your works. Uh, so I'm curious, um, to what extent, in what ways have you advertised this gallery um, as, a, as a space? Oh, yes. Um, um, the Journal Sentinel Weekend Q, right. we advertise every show right. on that. And the, then the artists, well, and then we have it in our, our St. Mark's mm -hmm. newsletter. 
on our website, on our Facebook. But then the, the artists it's themselves need to get it out there, like with MARN. Are you familiar with MARN, Milwaukee Area Resource Network? Okay, it's a, it's a wonderful resource for artists um, where you can post all kinds of things. You have to join, um, but it's a good resource for artists who are looking for, who are posting exhibits, who are looking for art supplies, who are, <laughs> I mean, it has everything on it. And you said there's a, there's a own website for this. Uh, we have, yeah, St. Mark's website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And they have a, I like the Facebook page. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. I wanted to advertise on Downer, but the Merchants Association does not allow that. Um, Syndex and Boswell and Downer Liquor are the three places that would let us put uh, flyers up. Yeah, but why do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have tried. When I first when we first started the gallery, I went to every single shop on Downer, and those were the and and what they have are just like community bulletin boards. So even so. Um, Cafe Hollander. Oh. So it's a it's. But Cafe Hollander has been wonderful to us. They've been very supportive of things that we do here, nice. as Downer Liquor. <laughs> <laughs> And the Red Smith, they, 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 do they? they? They have a parking spot here. And, oh, okay. And they give us bread for, for different things. Oh, good. I didn't know that. Okay. Say your dinner. So you get him to repeat that when he has a <laughs> microphone on. <laughs> I won't remember. <laughs> we will. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about the merchants, if you know any any more about the Merchants Association? How does I that don't. Work? I'm sorry, I don't. I really, once I moved away, I kind of lost touch with the things that were going on in Downer other than when I need to come to shop here or to meet somebody or to come to church. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not a good resource for, for that. And when did you move away? 1990. Um, so, probably it's the last question. What is your most favorite place in Dara, St. Mark's? Or it could be like a past place, mm -hmm. but it could be present. Oh, the past place would be the coffee trader. Coffee trader. <laughs> <laughs> For you. Yes, because I lived right over there. Uh -huh. So, you know, it was a place to meet friends, mm -hmm. a place to go and sit and read. Mm -hmm. um, it was just... Uh, um, is it like um, the activities over there is is the reason for you to like select coffee trader as your most favorite place or like the food or it's just the atmosphere. atmosphere 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 yeah it was just a neat it was just such a different place um, Downer Theater, do you think that contributes to the atmosphere? I do, absolutely. In what way? Um, because they tend to show more art films, more kind of on the edge type films, and there's a real, and, and the Oriental too, you know, they're, I think they're owned by the same yeah. company. And so it's a real draw for those people who don't want to see the, the big blockbuster films, but want to want to see thinking films. Do you think it, it matters that um, uh, it doesn't have the kinds of seats and... Uh, no, I seats? think that's the draw, that it's like the old time theaters. It's like, yeah. No, I, I don't think that's a deterrent at all. And that the little kiosk they have sticking out from the building itself, there's a right. little <laughs> glass booth. Mm -hmm. Ticket off. That's kind of, yeah, ticket off is kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Very old. Yeah, just a very old 
way of selling tickets. Right. <laughs> now you just buy them online, you know, show up and run into the theater. Right. But right. here you have to meet, actually talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I'm just, uh, just to be a little bit more specific, um, so we have Starbucks, um, Cafe Holland. I'm curious if you could um, describe in further detail, like, what, 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 why can't these two cafes satisfy what um, the coffee trader once provided? Well, that's a good question. Um, I love the Hollander and I love the Pancake House. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially <laughs> their French toast. Um, Starbucks also. Uh, it's, just, it's, a just, it's a different era. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it's just a different feel. Downer doesn't have the same feel as it had 20 years ago. Um, Is it possibly because I used to spend a lot of time in the coffee chair too? <laughs> oh, good. Is it, is it possibly because it was such an open area? Yeah. It was more like a forum. It was more like a public space as opposed to a restaurant. Yes, it absolutely. Was. I guess that's what I was trying to say by the high ceilings with all the pipes and the brick walls. And it was. It was huge. Well, not huge, but it was open. You're right. It was so open. And, um, and it was so friendly. And it seemed like a lot of the same people just kept coming, especially on the weekends and, like I say, in the mornings before work when I would go and have coffee there. Um, yes, I think that that explains it very well. It was very open as opposed to having, you know, booths and tables here and there. It was just, you could see. The food was, well, you picked what... <laughs> The food was okay. It wasn't gourmet. It was good. Um, you learned what you liked and what you didn't like. <laughs> um, the uh, restaurant was in the basement, which was kind of, I mean, the, the, the uh, kitchen was in the basement, which was kind of interesting. And then, like I said, in the back, he would change from different things. Um, there was gelato there at one time, a gelato. Uh, chocolates. Chocolates, oh yes, the chocolates. I had forgotten about those. And Valentina's, that one, were, do you know about Valentina's, that wonderful, wonderful woman shop that was on where Henry's is now? Or no, where the pancake house is now. It was in the back. Of the yeah, stairs. yeah, yeah. He had so many things. He did so many interesting things with that, with that space. The coffee trader was always in the front, but in the back, he really did change over with things. So it was always very interesting, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> you got to give me one so I your hands well. Yeah. <laughs> it's an extraordinary story. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the what you... The gallery and what you've done. It's been great. It really has. Do you remember what you uh, enjoyed over at uh, Coffee Trader? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. What, what, what was your usual? On Saturdays, I would have eggs and bacon and... Well, I would have the eggs and bacon and coffee and toast, and then on Sunday I would have their French toast. <laughs> <laughs> and a funny story is that every weekend I would go over there, and so one Sunday they fixed my French toast early, and I didn't go. <laughs> oh, really? 